Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Stepping Up. I'm your host, Danielle Dubois. This week, we review one of the initiatives by the government of St. Lucia, which brought relief to hundreds of households as part of the COVID-19 national response. From the lockdown in April, the government's response took the shape in several initiatives. It first started with the food packages, which was arranged by Nemo. The sudden shutdown meant that many were left disadvantaged, not able to access food. With the help of the business sector, government procurement, and the St. Lucia Cadet Corps, over 10,000 food packages were delivered island-wide to families who needed them the most. After this, the government sought to collaborate with the St. Lucia Hotel and Tourism Association to deliver hot meals on Sundays. Several hotels around the island opened their kitchens to cook hot meals. From here, the engagement with farmers and the marketing board began where the produce and meats were purchased directly from local farmers. With assessment and monitoring, the government realized that the above was not sustainable and sought to create a new program, the Good Food Box program. This program was a collaboration between the St. Lucia Marketing Board and the government of St. Lucia, which benefited so many persons on different levels. Farmers, fishers, poultry farmers, especially those who lost an outlet due to the closing of the borders and the imminent shutdown of the tourism sector. The marketing board stepped in and stepped up to provide economic relief by absorbing produce that would usually supply the hotels to bring wholesome good food to households island-wide. In this first segment, we feature the St. Lucia Marketing Board, learn about their national mandate and how they continue to play a vital role in the agricultural sector. Let's take a look at this interview as we chat with the general manager, Mr. Nathaniel Reynolds, and Mrs. Teresa Daisy, the operations manager of the St. Lucia Marketing Board. So we know that COVID-19, basically, um, a lot of our sectors, especially, you know, we know the tourism sector shut down. That means, you know, a lot of other supporting sectors were, at, um, were halted as well. Let us know how farmers were affected and what exactly did Marketing Board do to assist farmers during that time? It was um, the wisdom of the Prime Minister that came to the marketing board. He realized that the hotels were closed and that farmers would have a lot of produce on the ground at the time. And he felt within himself that the farmers' sh produce shouldn't suffer and the farmers themselves shouldn't suffer. What would have happened would have had a lot of wastage on the ground. So the government collaborated with the St. Lucia Marketing Board to prepare a thousand care packages on a weekly basis to send to the less fortunate. We were able to buy from the farmers. We were able to buy every item from the farmers that they brought to us. And we were able to work with our care packages and send out to the less fortunate persons in the country. Let me just indicate that uh, we purchased from registered farmers and unregistered farmers. And talking about unregistered farmers, a lot of persons who worked in the hotel industry, people who had lost their jobs, uh, they had a little kitchen garden, they had avocado trees planted by their homes, they had mango trees, they had their little stuff, and they were able to come here and sell all those things to the marketing board so that they too could have been benefited, could have been benefited from what we were doing in collaboration with the government. Nice. Wash your hands. Wash them right. With soap and lots of water. Get between fingers. Get under the nails. Go above the wrists. Do this for no less than 15 seconds. Rinse properly. Dry with a clean towel. If there is no water, do the same washing motions with an alcohol-based hand sanitizer containing at least 70% alcohol. Wash your hands. Wash them right. This message brought to you courtesy the Bureau of Health Education of the Ministry of health and wellness. Here with Ms. Teresa Daisy and she's the operations manager of the St. Lucia Marketing Board and she's going to let us know a little bit more about the mandate, the history of the St. Lucia Marketing Board. How are you? And thank you so much for saying yes and agreeing to do this interview with Health Saturday. So I want to start off by asking, how did the marketing board start? One, what is the role the marketing board plays in St. Lucia? Okay, the marketing board was established in 1967 through an act of parliament as a statutory 
Corporation and has been ongoing for, I would say, 52 years in its making. The marketing board basically is charged with the responsibility to market farmers' produce, namely locally and overseas to some extent, and also to work with farmers, both individuals and farmer groups. For throughout the years of its establishment, the marketing board has been working with farmer groups, namely the Azure Farmer Group, you have Salty Bus, Buns, Chris, Bellevue. And in addition to that, the marketing board also work with individual farmers. As a matter of fact, based on the record, we have a total of 415 farmers. That includes both the individual farmers and the farmer groups. Uh, we, the marketing board actually have been purchasing from those farmers on a, to say, a daily basis. But more so, what the marketing board does is to go down to the field two days per week on Tuesdays and Thursdays, visit those farmers, interact with them, buy their produce, take it back to our pack house where we are high, and most of the produce are sold currently at our retail outlet in Castries. Okay. Um, in the past, and to, I would say to some extent, the marketing board sold extensively to the hotels and also exported, but uh, more recently, the marketing board have been selling most of its produce at the retail outlet. Bear in mind that COVID set in and the hotels are closed. So this outlet is basically our main source of, um, I would say, sale, where we sell our produce to generate the income to manage the marketing board. And do you all have a good um, turnover in terms of produce with the retail outlet? Yeah, basically, uh, I would say our, the produce we sell is within the range of a little over $100,000 monthly. Right. Yeah. Okay, um, let's talk about COVID a little bit and um, let's talk about the impact of the farmers and you guys saw that there was a need for marketing board to step in. So let's, let's talk about that. Okay, when COVID set in, that was during the early March, yeah. the government of St. Lucia approached the marketing board where the marketing board entered some agreement or collaboration with the government of St. Lucia to supply 1,000 boxes, care packages, for a period of three months, that's from March to the end of August, to the needy, the less fortunate fraud, the length and breadth of St. Lucia. And I must say that was a good initiative by the government in the sense that the number of farmers who were faced with this dilemma as to where they would have sell the produce. And um, because of the volume of produce that went into these care packages, I'll just give you a few examples. Like for instance, you had plantain, green, um, the banana, um, you had the dry goods, fur in cassava, eggs, and the total in terms of the volume of produce was way in excess of um, almost $400,000 as a volume of produce. And uh, those, even the fish, the chicken farmers benefited extensively. So lots of produce were produced and purchased sorry, within that time frame to put in those boxes throughout the period of time. Nice. Were there any other agencies that assisted the logistics and the transportation? Um, what is it that you guys did to let the farmers know? How did you contact the farmers to let them like know, hey, there's an opportunity. If you have any stuff on the ground, come to Marketing Board. Okay, what, we, what the Marketing Board did from the inception, <coughs> we worked along with Blue Ocean. Okay. They were the source for the fish and real food for the chicken. The marketing board also worked with farmers, farm, uh, I think five or six large-scale farmers for the eggs. And um, apart from that, as a matter of fact, when the, we started the, the care packaging, we were a bit low in terms of the volume, and we saw some of the produce from the outside sources. However, within a week or two, I mean, the volume of produce were, I mean, it was such, it was alarming to see the amount of farmers who came to our doors to sell. And even talking to farmers in a, um, from a one-to-one, -one, um, farmers told us that, well, that was a lifesaver for them because they had nowhere to turn to sell those produce. And um, it's a sad thing at this moment the produce, um, the care packaging came to an end. However, uh, the, the marketing board that is management, the directors, um, board of directors are looking to see, and ex to see if there will be some sort of extension of this pro program. Yeah. And um, apart from 
moving into the care packaging, we are expecting that um, some of the avenues of, uh, for the farmers to sell their produce will come along. Nice. Did you guys have to hire anybody here in your park house to help with the sorting and logistics? Yeah, well, apart from the small number of farmers, sorry, small number of staff we have on board, we employed 12 other staff members who came on board to assist us. And were they oh, yeah. short term? That was a short term employment? Oh yeah, that, that, was, a, that was a short term. However, I must say, after the, the care packaging came to an end, what the marketing board did, in fact management, we entered some arrangement to train those very same, same um, core staff. And um, the staff, and we went through HACCP training. Um, the SOP standard operating procedures with the very core of, of, of staff. And we were able to keep just a small number out of the 12. I'm nice. um, say about four members of staff out of the 12. Okay. How um, do you foresee, what are some of the new initiatives that you guys have in, um, besides the care packages? Um, we still know that things are, we see a slow reopening of the tourism sector. Um, so probably that might, you know, ease the, the farmers a little bit. But what else does Marketing Board have in store? Or what is the next plan? Um, you guys have in, in mind basically okay so apart from apart from the care packaging management as um, the general manager and myself we are working closely with the Ministry of Agriculture to see how we can facilitate the flow of produce through the school feeding program okay. we just have ongoing discussion and we are hoping that would be an initiative that will we can enter into so that we'll be able to supply the schools throughout the island Apart from this initiative, we are also working closely with Export St. Lucia to see how we can export some of this produce um, to the neighboring islands. Uh, more recently, we had uh, some meetings ongoing with the farmers of Angers. We had an indoor um, meeting with the farmers right on this, uh, this facility. And those farmers have been looking to see how Marketing Board can assist them to enter some arrangement to sell this produce, uh, not only to our local front, but to export it at some point. Nice. So yeah. just to wrap up, um, any, anything you'd like to say or let persons know about the marketing board? You know that marketing board has come under fire for years now. It's like the marketing board, the marketing board. So what is that? Um, you know, we have some conceptions about the marketing board. What is it that you like St. Lucia to know? You know, given that you have said that, you know, you guys are restructuring, that you have plans for the future. But just you personally, being an operations manager here for some time now, what is it that you have to let St. Lucia know about the marketing board? Okay, the marketing board was established for a purpose. And I must say that given the number of farmers we have been assisting, because we know there is Massey with the large scale of, of operation, but when we look at the role the marketing board play, one I was I must mention that the marketing board goes out to the field, I mean all the way down to Salty Best and, and Angers to buy the farmers' produce and take it back here. These are farmers, I must say, if the marketing board could not have provided these sort of services, probably would be um, trying to sell those produce, you know, by the market and elsewhere. But um, apart from the marketing board going out to buy the produce. Uh, when we look at the volume of produce we are selling here, I mean in the retail, uh, when we compare our prices in terms of our selling price, I must say our prices are quite affordable, mm. you know, and um, the marketing board definitely has a role to play mm -hmm. to assist the less fortunate, those farmers, the medium to small scale farmers, and, and also a person who will just walk in mm -hmm. and sell the produce. So in moving forward, I hope that um, the government will see the need to assist the marketing board to continue the mandate that was given to the, well, this establishment, that, mm -hmm. that is to market farmers' produce yeah. and to assist those farmers who can even help not only themselves but the family and St. Lucia at large. Thank you very much and, you know, welcome. signing out from Marketing Board. COVID-19 is a new pandemic disease as declared by the World Health Organization. It is transmitted directly by respiratory droplets when an infected person coughs or sneezes 
or indirectly through rubbing the face with contaminated hands. There is still no specific treatment or vaccine against COVID-19, and as such, the farming community should adhere to some special recommendations. Limit the number of crew members to only essential persons. Practice frequent hand washing and cleaning of all boat surfaces. Limit contact with the public, keeping a safe distance between each person. Limit unnecessary conversation with customers and pairs during the sale of fish. Wash hands frequently with soap and running water. Or use 60 to 95% alcohol-based hand sanitizer until water and soap are available. Sneeze and cough in a flexed elbow or into a tissue, immediately discarding the used tissue into a bin and wash hands with soap and water or use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer until soap and water is available. And avoid close contact with persons having respiratory symptoms. More than ever before, your important role as gatekeepers of St. Lucia's nutritional health and food security should be taken seriously. When you exercise these precautions, you not only safeguard your health, but also continue to allow all St. Lucians access to freshly caught fish and other seafood. Remember, it is our responsibility to ensure our nation eats fresh, St. Lucia's best. I definitely learned so much about the St. Lucia Marketing Board and how they continue to support farmers. We hope that moving forward, they can continue to step in and step up and move with the times. In the next segment, we chat with Mr. Er Hippolyte, a farmer by profession with a background in agriculture as an extension officer in the ministry. Let's take a look at the interview as we chat about the business aspect of farming and his interaction with the St. Lucia Marketing Board. So to conclude our show, we zone in on one of our farmers and I'm excited to talk to, um, to chat with Mr. Earl Hippolyte and he was like, why couldn't you guys come to my farm? <laughs> so, Mr. Uh, Mr. Hippolyte, thank you for joining us today. Let us know a little bit more about you, your farm, and how long have you been into the business? Earl Hippolyte, I farm at Deglo. I've been farming for five years now. Uh, previously, I was an agriculturist, so I just went right into farming. So when you say you're an agriculturist, what exactly was I that? I worked in extension, working oh, with farmers. You worked with the ministry? I worked with the ministry and then uh, Winfresh. SLBG, then Winfresh. Okay, so what type of, are you into crops and livestock? What? Yeah, I'm more into crops. More crops. Yeah. And what are the crops that you grow on your farm? I grow um, primarily bananas, plantains, and lately I did some short crops. Watermelons, pumpkins, cucumbers. I tried my hand at um, some cucumbits. Okay, nice. Cantaloupes. Okay. So let us know a little bit about um, your relationship with the marketing board what is the relationship like with the marketing board yeah, well i had a i've had a long standing since i started i've had a relationship with marketing board uh, but it was compounded towards the program that they had the feeding program for the needy after covid post covid so i really supplied at a greater extent okay were you affected um, when there was a shutdown of the hotels? I think all farmers were affected, more or less. Uh, but um, after you know, things opened up, I think the marketing board program really helped. So let me know a little bit more about what exactly you supplied to the marketing board and how that initiative um, basically helped you throughout that down period. Yeah. Well, I did some short-term crops immediately after. So I sold cucumbers and... Um, I sold um, large quantities of bananas and plantains weekly. So for almost six months since the program started, I supply consistently to marketing board those products. Thanks. Um, now that things have eased up a little bit, have you started or sourced new markets for your, your crops or your goods? I always had alternative markets, but I believe um, the more markets you have, the more alternatives you have is the better. So you could, it will encourage you to produce more. Right. The more you can sell, the more you will increase your production and your productivity. Okay. What is it that you'd like St. Lucians to know about you know, your, your livelihood as a farmer? And um, what is it that you'd like to see happen in terms of your relationship with the marketing board moving forward? I believe um, more people should get into farming, especially the younger people. Uh, 
And we know most people like to go into white collar jobs as opposed to going to farming, but I believe that it's a good investment. It's, a, it's risky, but I believe it's good, especially if we could improve certain things like um, have farm insurances or you know, adverse conditions. Uh, I, I would like to see marketing board probably contract me to produce certain crops for them so I could produce it consistently and I know probably I could have a semi-fixed price so I can at least work out my profits or losses. <laughs> but uh, no, I'm just joking. I think it's more profit. If you do it well, if you're productive as a farmer, there is a profit to be made from farming. So I really want to encourage um, also for local, the public to buy local support marketing board. If they support marketing board, they're supporting the local farmers. And it's good for the economy because we employ, we, we're helping the unemployment by employing more people. The more we produce, the more we can afford to employ. So having that, you know, support with marketing board, and I believe marketing board is well placed. They can combine all the farmers produce, they can consolidate and really market because it keeps us on our farm. If we have to go all over trying to market, the time you'll not spend sufficient time managing your staff and your resources on the farm. So the more time you have to spend managing, you know, on point, you'll be more productive, you'll be able to work on quality better and, you know, and be more profitable. So I believe marketing board is well placed to work and hand in hand with farmers to really improve and go forward. I believe marketing board should expand now. After this pilot project with the needy pr packages, I believe marketing board should really go out there and probably do a delivery service to, to the public, you know, have market small packages similar to what the needy program had and sell it to those, the public who wouldn't want to ordinarily go to the market, mm. you know, br consolidate stuff, prepare different packages and sell it to the public. Nice. Yeah, so, um, yeah, so the same question, basically, you know, what it's like encourage young people to, 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 to do farming and your relationship with the marketing board and all the nice little incentives that you suggested. Uh, well, Mavli Apolodi program uh, helped Lapunidi of Apwe COVID. Marketing board in your program that you can buy products from farmers to distribute to people who are in So, I think that it's a good program that you can encourage farmers to produce more and to change your production. Because after COVID, it's going to be difficult for everyone in the country and also for farmers. So, I think that it's a good project to help farmers to join the objective. Et pour produire. Aussi pour chaîner au café en profit, parce qu'on est pour employer les gens et pour ça payer les travailleurs, on est pour café en profit. Euh, moi, je crois aussi que le marketing board a continué à travailler avec les femmes, toujours après le programme, parce que le programme a existé pour six mois. Mais je crois que le travail avec le board pour faire des produits par semaine. Je uh, hope that the marketing board of the OST has grown up in a way that it has gained a lot. It has encouraged the to continue to plant and to come and so that they don't have time to plant, but they don't have time to plant the farmers. Because if they have plant the farmers, they don't have time to plant the farmers. So if they have plant the farmers, they don't have time to plant the farmers. It's a good thing. Je suis en bonne relation avec le marketing board et je hope that que vous avez dit à la manière que vous avez exporté, que vous avez continué à consolider toutes les marchandises et aussi vendre par le public. Vous um, avez juste délivré les marchandises par le public par pa, différents packages pour les gens qui ne peuvent pas aller à la place. Uh, so, Bon, <laughs> merci à ça et pour ça. <laughs> Thank you very much, sir. <laughs> and all the best moving forward. <laughs> now it's time for Link Up. Kadeem Faustin is a well-known creative, dancer, and fashion designer who made Canada his home and continues to bring his St. Lucian roots into everything that he does. Currently, he's working on a collection to present for the Toronto Fashion Week. 
an event which he has graced with his work more than once. Let's take a look at the link up with my longtime good friend, Kadeem Faustin. How are you? And let us know what's going on up there. Well, I want to say that I'm amazing, but I'm still, I'm still feeling good, but I'm a little exhausted um, and just preparing for, for my show, you know, what that's like in the creative um, world. But yes, I'm, I'm good. I'm blessed to be here, um, given okay. this, this little All right. So let us know a little bit about your journey as a fashion designer. Most St. Lucians, everybody, you're a household name because you used to dance in Silver Shadows for a very long time. And then, you know, you branched off, started doing your own thing. And now in Canada, you've made a name for yourself, Kyle Gavassi. So let us know a little bit more about your work as a fashion designer in Canada. And then you can zone into Toronto Fashion Week. Um, well, here, like, I mean, I will say that I'm, I'm thankful and blessed for, for the opportunity to have the platform to be able to focus my, my work on the level that I'm doing it, like, right now. Because um, I was giving an opportunity. I was a model, I, um, and the, the, I modeled for African Fashion Week, and the year after that, they had a student design um, competition. So I went, I took part, I won, and, I mean, from then, I just knew that, I was a boy from a small island and I had to do what needed to be done to be great because I don't settle for mediocrity. So I just tried to push forward and, and, and better myself all the time. I was in competition with, my, with myself really and truly um, just to be able to be the best at what I say that I am doing. You know, if you feel a little bit, you better just put your best foot forward. Mm. What are some of the things you did to improve your craft while you, um, you know, when you just started? Um, for me, it's just improving my craft really and truly because I'm self-taught. What I did is just start trusting and believing in myself more. I believe mm -hmm. that I can do it. Do, no, like trust in my inner artist. Like, mm -hmm. Kaljavasi is new to you and new to other people, but Kaljavasi is where I've always been. You know, I've, I've always been an artist, whether dance, whether, whether acting, whether any, anywhere, like you still have to tap into, in, into that space and place. Um, so I went on a, on a, on a journey of self-discovery and just realized that how much that I could do and who I, I, I could be. So, and realized that all you, once you start trusting in you, everything else will, will, will follow. You know, just before we started, we had a little discourse about, you know, um, back then, you used to show me your designs in your notebook and you'd walk with it everywhere. And, um, you know, we all know the struggles of being an artist in St. Lucia in terms of being able to, you know, be yourself 100% because you know our community is small and sometimes our ideals may, you know, have us from wanting to be our full self. Did you ever envision that you'd have been able to achieve so much having go gone over to Canada? I think as a child... What was the plan? What was the plan when you left? As a child, my imagination always run wild. I, even now when, when I meditate, I always go back to my grandma's, my grandmother's house and like overlooking into like the, the, the wild and you could see the, 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 the sea from, from, from a distance. And I, I, I used to have this toy car driving on the, 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 the banister of the, the balcony. And I used to envision me driving on the bigger highways of a foreign land I, I never knew existed. Really and, true. And no, it's, it's true. And I used to me on the big bridges and like everything you see in the movies, I used to envision me doing that. So the first time when, 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 I, when, when I came here and I bought my first car and I had that moment, I was like, wow. I'm having a moment that I had when I was a child. I saw myself in a foreign country, owning my owning a car and, 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 and driving on, 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 on like a, a big highway and realizing that your imagination makes room for what and who you want to be. If you imagine it, you could be it. If you dream it, all you have to do is go and achieve it. Um, and work hard for it, work hard for it. The work, the working, I, no one could have prepared me for the work hard aspect. And I think being, being black, and being from a smaller island and doing what I do and using print instead of what people expect me to use, I, like, I have to work even harder. Although like, my aesthetic is loud and, and, and like, I'm not using print as an excuse to do less, I'm doing as much as everything else. Um, yeah. But I still, I still have to be 
more in the room. I still have to, 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 to speak up even more. I still have to be more than anything else. And I'm okay with doing that because it makes me a better me and I'm learning things about myself. And, and it gives me an appreciation for when I get to the level of, level of success that I want to be, that I can look back and say, you know what? I worked hard for it. I know and, and the most important thing too is a point that uh, throughout your journey, you, you may not promise to be authentically yourself and true to yourself. I would, not, I would not. I would not be anything else. And right now, in this place and space that I am, it's just like, if my, my, art, like my art and me are one, so yeah. if you are not accepting of, of my art, then you're not accepting of me. If you're not accepting of me, you're not accepting of my art. And that's okay. If you don't like it, that's okay. <laughs> I always tell people, don't invite me to an event and expect me to, 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 to dress down. I'm sorry. You invite me to your wedding, I'm coming. So you better, you better be okay with you and be confident with your you because I am me authentically 112% all the time. All the time. Kareem, let us know a little bit about your latest connection, your latest collection, the one that you're working on. And let us know how you continue to bring your St. Lucian essence into your work. Uh, like it's... It's beautiful. I feel like for the first time I'm working on a collection that is not, uh, uh, that did not derive from some form of tragedy or some pain. I loved digging into those, those, those things as they fueled me. And my mom passing away was one of the main reasons why I feel like I'm pushing towards my goals and my, my dreams to, to, to make her proud in, in some way. Um, but I had a moment of realizing that if I have to continue working from pain or from tragedy, tragedy has to always occur in my life. And I don't, I don't want that for myself. Like who wants to always go through tra tragic events? So I had a moment of rebirth and realizing that I want to work from different place and space. So I, am, I went back to some of the most fondest memories uh, growing up in St. Lucia and just running in the rain when, when it rained and, and sliding in Babano in the mud on the playing field. Like those things going by the, the waterfall by the river. So I, this this my collection this year uh is called uh mud but not mud mud to the english-speaking people labu to me so it's it's called labu and i just feel like labu has such sophistication you know um to some they see the messy they see the mucky to me i see opportunity to just be free within who you are and walk within your destiny like mud is 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 more than just what you yeah. see. Yeah, the most beautiful, one of the most beautiful flowers grows from the muck, you know, the lotus grows out of the muckiest waters in the mud. It blooms yet untouched by its circumstance. And I feel like I'm living that, that if my story is so complex, but you see me and you, you, I don't wear half of the things that I've gone through on me, you know, um, and that influences so much. Uh, so mud i'm doing labu it's it's about my growing up in st lucia and the things that i love and i'm doing a collection for me about me um for you to see get up get a piece of of my journey and the beautiful things um that yes, <laughs> it is i am i am this is the most like i'm excited mostly about this collection it's the hardest collection mm -hmm. ever, ever. Yeah, i'm happy to see to see how you're talking about your work, Kadeem, because I know as an artist, when you're creating something, you're like, eh, it's not good, or you think it could be 100% better, you know, but hearing the satisfaction in your voice, hearing the fact that you think that it's something really amazing and you can't wait to share with it, um, share it with other people, I think that augurs well, and that really means that it's really something special. Well, it's, it, is, it is special because, like, I have, I had a moment this morning of just telling myself to surrender to the process. You know, yeah. things, I have a thing about things being perfect and, and if something happens, I tend to like just close on myself and, and feel like the world has ended, you know? And I yeah. said, once you lose, stop trying to control a process, which is already, you're already on your path of what you need to be doing. Just surrender to it. Whatever happens, yeah. it happens. And that is what it's supposed to be. That is, that will, that what makes it authentic. So no matter how that show goes, I know that I have sur I surrendered to its process and allowed it yeah. to, and like I my it is because it's 
it's you and you 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 surrendered everything a part of above uh, you surrender parts of yourself yes. so that you're not you're not feeling afraid to express and you just say you know what this is what it is and you let it go i'm opening up myself to 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 people now in a different way um because mm -hmm. i'm not just fashion i'm not just one thing you know um kadeem uh to people who know me dearly and kaljavasi to those who 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 are admiring my work and, and 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 i'm thankful for for that it's just that i started off in in, in choir i started off doing drama and plays and then trickle off in, into dance and now like do, doing fashion so for the first time i am incorporating every aspect of me i am composing and producing my own music um yeah. I did not know I had that, that skill and talent. Like I was there freaking out because I could not figure out how. Because how. the more you let go, the more you let go, the more it comes to you and it, more, it becomes clearer, you know, your talents and your capabilities. But Kadeem, we need to wrap up. Um, when we're wrapping up, um, let me know as we conclude, what is it that you want the Lucians to know about you right now? What message you want to send back home to all the people who love and are rooting for you? Let us know how we can contact you and keep in touch with you. Um, I feel like my my message to uh, Saint Lucia, I don't know, is just thank you, thank you for 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 being my place of birth. Thank you for 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 giving me so much culture and so much so much influence that I could draw from and pull pull through. Saint Lucians are like. I don't know. It's unexplainable. Sinusha is a is is a place on a space on its own. Like you have to experience it to know. Its people is just beautiful. Um, my advice to the artists who are who are staying at home, maybe not thinking that they're good enough, is to just jump. Like be who you want to be. Walk within your truth and within your destiny. Consistency keeps you and 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 pushes you on the path of where you need to be. Jump into anything. Stop being a basement, we'll say, like artists. Like, put it out there. Even if you feel like it's not good enough, someone will see it, will like it. You know, it will push you to better yourself. And, and don't, don't think that, that, that there's no place and space for you. There is. You never know. You, the worst thing you want to do is die with, with, with so much. You know, you want to be empty when that moment uh, goes on. You want to share with the world the gift that God gave you to give. You know, and yeah. Can you let us know how we can contact you? Ah uh, yes, uh, you could on um, Facebook, um, Instagram um, at Cal Javasi or J just Javasi. Um, yes, email Cal Javasi at email dot com. Um, all the information is on the the, the um, social media um, platforms in any way other than contacting me. But yes, I'm reachable. And to the government. Sorry. Sorry? No, I'm just, I just want to say to, to, to the Gavi, <laughs> um, book me. I want to come do a, a, a show um, in St. Lucia, uh, hopefully for a war, like an independence something or some form of cultural celebration. I want to bring back home what I have learned. And, and, yeah. Well, that's definitely and, on the table for you to do, Kadeem. You know, you have to organize your proposal, organize your stuffs. And, you know, you know, we're a government that's very open and very willing to to feature people, anyone doing amazing stuff. So you definitely in the right space. And, you know, we had to endorse you. And something that you said to me while you were wrapping up was when you said that there's always room at the top for the best, always room at the top for the best. And I pray that Calgavasi becomes a worldwide known name and label. And just yes, thank you so much for everything and keep up the good work, Kadeem. Much. Oh, and the show is is airing um, virtually. It's happening virtually um, on Instagram. If you follow Fashion Up Toronto, they will be Fashion Toronto hosting the, the the show. Yes, live. Um, Definitely, we're going to share that for you, Kadeem. <laughs> <laughs> All right, dude. take care of yourself, darling. So much love. Thank you for having me again. All right, and bye bye. That's it for this week's installment of Stepping Up. Feel free to send me an email at steppingup758 at gmail.com if you want to be featured or know someone who should be featured. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm your host, Daniel Dubois. Keep safe. And until next time, don't forget to keep stepping up. <laughs>